Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the input box with Excel VBA. Oftentimes in counseling research, as we're configuring workbooks to accept data, we might have a message box that notifies a user of a particular event and gives the user options. If we want to have a message box that can collect data, we would use an input box. An input box is very similar but it allows for the entry of data. I have here the types for the input box, and I'll get to this more when we look at the code for an input box. And you can see that each of these numbers corresponds to a specific type. You have formula, number, string, logical value, that's true or false, cell reference, error value, and array. Here I'll just be using number, string, logical value, and cell reference. I'll be demonstrating all four of these types in the input box. To the right of this table, I have a form control combo box that's configured with all the possible type values. So if I right click this and go to format control, you can see for the input range, I simply have D4 through D10, which is where these types are stored. And I've linked this combo box to cell H4 in the cell link here. So as I select, for example, type 2, which is string, you can see the cell link is 3. That's because it's the third value in the range. So the 0 is 1, the 1 is 2, and the 2 is 3. I've configured this cell to the right of this cell link value to return the actual value from the type. So if I select 0, it returns a 0. If I select 8, for example, it returns an 8. And that uses an index function with the array being these types and the row being this cell link. So I've, I've configured it this way so that I can run several different examples from one subroutine. So here I select the example that I want to demonstrate and I have the matching type here in cell I4 and I can click this button and this button is configured to bring up the input box that corresponds with the type. So if I click this button now, I'll have one that's looking for a number. Here, if I click it, one that's configured for a string, and so on. So let's take a look first at number. So the combo box here is set to 1, and cell I4 is as well. So I click the button, and you see here uh, it says data entry enter a number, and I'm going to put in the number 53. Click OK. And here in cell C5, the one next to the type, I have the value 53. So let's take a look at the code that does this. Alt F11 will bring up the Visual Basic Editor. And first moving down to the end here, for that button, that command button, that's also a form control button, button 5, it's just call input box, which is this subroutine up here. So all this is done with just two subroutines. So let's take a look at this input box subroutine. We start with declaring n as an integer and setting n to equal the value in I4. So moving back here, again, that value is the type. And then we have a select case function, and that runs all the way down to just before the end of the subroutine. So select case and then end select. So there are going to be four cases here. Those four cases are going to correspond with 1, 2, 4, and 8. The number, string, logical value, and cell reference. The examples that I want to demonstrate here. So we can see we have select case n. And if the case is 1, we have the type that's going to match that because it's going to match n. And that's going to be a number, case 2, string, 
case 4, a logical value, and case 8, we're going to select a range. So taking a look at case is equal to 1. We have x declared as an integer here. Then we have x equals application.input box, enter number, comma, data entry. Data entry is just the title. And then the type equals, in this case, 1, because it matches n. And then I have range C5 set to equal x. So let's try that one out. So with one set, I click the button and it says enter number. I'm going to use 50. Click OK. And we have the number 50 being displayed here in cell C5. Let's take a look now at string. Go to 2. And I'm going to move back to the code. To take a look at that real quick. Dim y is string. We have y equals application input box enter string, the title, data entry, and of course the type matches the case. And we're setting cell C6 to be equal to that string. Moving back, I'll click the button for this, and you see enter string. And I'm just going to make this the word string. Click OK, and that appears in cell C6. Moving up to the logical value, again taking a look at the code. Not much changing here from one case to the other, especially in these first three. It's quite a bit different for range. But for logical value, it's not. Uh, dim z as boolean. And again, the same code here except for enter logical value. And the type is, of course, going to change with the case. And it's going to be cell C7 in this case. So here, it's just going to be true or false. So I'm going to enter true. Click OK. We can see we get the logical value true. I've handled the cell reference example a little differently. So I'll go here to set this at 8. And let's move back to the code and take a look what I've done here. When case is equal to 8, I'm going to declare R as a range. And I put in an error handler here. On error, resume next. And on error, go to 0. And I've done that because when we bring up 8, when we click this button, if we don't select range, when we click cancel, this would trigger an error. So I built in the error handler to catch that. So then we have inside the error handler, we set the value R to equal the input box and then the type of course N which would be 8 and then down here we have an if then else statement we have if R is equal to nothing we're going to exit the subroutine. Otherwise under else I've made quite a few changes here to the area that we selected so with the interior we're changing the color with the font we are changing the color as well and we're going to use a bold font and an italic font. So I used this number of changes, this is four changes, just to demonstrate how much more quickly it is to use this method than to go through and manually make all these changes. And I built this using the record macro feature and just changed the word selection with the R variable. So instead of selection interior, it's R dot interior. So let's take a look how this one works. Going back to the worksheet, and with this select, selection set to 8, click the button, and you can see here this is different. This indicates select range. So I'm going to select a range here to the left. I'm going to select from B4 down through B14, and click OK. And you can see it changes the background color to black, the font to red, and now it's bold and italic for all the values that I selected. I hope you found this video on using the input box in Excel VBA to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.